Hello there, all you amazing people. Today we're going to do something a little bit funny funny and that is we are going to mess around with cpu cores and going to set a program to run on one or two of a specific cpu core that you want it to run on you can do that for benchmarking um if you have a like let's just say that i think this core is not running that well try it you know and el eliminate it from your system and see if it crashes, or only run a lot of tasks on that process to see if your system crashes, or and the, 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 it's endless possibilities i don't know like I can, I can sit here and give you examples till we all are like ten thousand years old and stuff like that and under windows is actually really really simple first if i look at performance oh and that goes, you can see I have four core CPU for this system here, four cores. But we want to go down to details, remember, wrong one, four cores. Let's go down to details here. And then you basically just find someone, that, uh, a program here that you want to run on select cores or that you want to test out on a course. Let's see if I can find a good old store here. I can't for the love of me or the life of me or anything what you call it, find Microsoft store in here. I can do it with one drive. Set affinity. Here it is. All processors, I have four cores, and the way the programming, they count zero is a number. In math, zero is not a number, but it anyway, that, that's something else. But I can do it with <laughs> one drive. I may need to have opened this in, in um, administrative privileges. But anyway, so you can see here, I can untick all processors. Now it's basically not running on any process. So I can say process three, I can play, say process one. Process 3 or 4 is 4, 1 is 2, 2 is 3, or I can say process 1, or I can say process 0. So if I click OK, now Notepad or sorry, Notepad OneDrive is only running on one core. It's only running on core 1. Right now, it's not taking out a lot of, let's say, resources. If I open up Google Chrome, can I do that with Google Chrome? So if you go in here into details, I have to remember to set this back to its original affinity or else we will go into issues. Do we have Chrome? We have a lot of Chrome tabs here. Can I do them all at once? I can't. So let, let's pick this one here. And again, you can set a process call forward. So we can say, take this one away, this one away, this one away. Do that one. What is this one saying? We basically run google chrome on only one core so if you do that with all the chrome things we have going on here this is a lot of things i have to remember to turn back on so now all my chrome instances here should be running on core number one and i don't know can we check that by running uh, let's say youtube oh we can see now core one is getting really taxed out here none of the other cores are getting doing anything so if we uh oh what can we play without getting ddos or not ddos um uh, copyright strike here let's look at some subnautica here now it's starting to, to use another core down here I can actually see it's actually really struggling. So why is it doing that? Oh, it's actually starting to using all cores, but if we go back in here to details, there probably are like a media encoder some, somewhere in here. And that's why it's starting to offload. We have a cat. So yeah, there's a media encoder in here somewhere that I can't seem to find. But you can see it's actually struggling quite a lot. Uh, sorry. And, and you can see it's actually heavily using core number one. So let's see if what happens if you go into details here. Now I'm going to enable all of these cores here again just do that that actually helped quite a bit already and let's do this one here it's starting to run really well right now chrome was probably not the best application to do this in because it has all these sub processes and whatnot but it is the one that you will probably see the best impact on so let, let's say you want to test something you want to see right now it's actually running quite well right now because now we gave it all the cores and if you look up here at performance it's it's you it's evening out all the cores or where would this be necessary to go in and set i don't even know can we set explore we can set explore you know file explorer down here to run on a certain thread or certain cpu so if you go in here let's say i have these two here cpu zero and one are physical cores these are hyper threading or let, let's pretend i have eight cores 
So, so, so CPU is zero. Zero, one, two, and three are physical cores. Four, five, six, and seven are hyper-threaded cores. So let's say you're playing a game and you have a little bit of performance issues with that, that game. Maybe it's because that game is running on hyper-threaded cores. So you can set that game in Affinity down here. You find it in the list, you right-click on it, you set Affinity, and you disable this and you select the cores that you want it to run on. And then you're telling Windows to only allocate the physical, four physical cores or two physical cores or how many physical cores you have to this game. But you need to understand, you need to know which cores are physical and hyper-threaded to do that. It could also be, let's say you have a, a program that's unstable, and that could be because it's running into a situation that it don't run well on hyper-threaded cores. You limit that program to only one of the cores that you know that is physical cores. And you can do that by benchmarking them and look at uh, you know how it's, the, the, the CPU is built up and all that fucking jazz. Another reason why you may want to do that is that, let's say, um, I'm doing a lot of multitasking jobs. So I'm playing a game and I'm live streaming. I could be like, I want my live streaming software. Again, let's pretend I have six cores here. So I want my live streaming software to be run on core five and four. And I want my game to be run on the rest of them. So that means that while you're gaming and live streaming, they don't, they don't jump cores, which could end up sometimes, not always, Windows and Linux and all those systems are really good at all of this core management and stuff like that. But you could potentially make it more smooth. You could potentially make your, your computer run better. This is probably something that's only like beneficial for limited processes computers. So let's say you have six cores and it's like a, a system that runs like 2.5 gigahertz or something like that. You know, you don't have the, 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 the most beefiest processor. Then you can help Windows out or Linux. You can do this under Linux also out by say, don't think about all this core switching thing. Don't think about automatically allocating resources. I am a smart human. I'm going to do that for you. And under Windows, it is as simple as finding the game. Go in here and set affinity and select the course that you want the programs to run on. I have affinity and not affinity. I have rounded uh, taskbar down here. But this is a little program that do this fancy thing down here. What if I'm like, you know what? It don't take a lot of resources. It's barely use any CPU. Just in case it don't go in a metal with some other programs that I have, I am going to say this is only going to run on one specific hyper-threaded core. So if you have a 12 core system, you say I only want, so let's say, Core 12 is a hyper-threaded core, and you know that say rounded CB is only going to be run in uh, core 10. And then Windows can, you know, wrinkle and dingle with all of the rest. It could help you a little bit with performances. It could help you a little bit with stability. And when I say could, it highly depends on how the program is programmed and how Windows handle that programming. It's same with Linux, had it been Linux. This, had, this highly depends on how the program is co coded and how Linux handled that coding. Most issues with, 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 with slowdowns and unoptimization is bad decoded software. It's most likely not even the operating system's fault, and this goes for any operating system in the world. Most issues that you see with, with, with oh my god, now my system is running slow, it's mostly because of badly programmed third-party programs. So stuff like this up here, a game, uh, a video edits, or any other programs that you have running. And you can sometimes help the operating system out by saying, limit it to these cores here. Don't just take all my resources. I, I, I have six cores, but I know if I give you all six cores, you want 200% on six cores. If you're rendering, for example, and you have, let's say, 12 or 24 cores, you are going to say to DaVinci Resolve, you know what, DaVinci Resolve, only use half of my cores. So that means that you could potentially game on the rest of the health cores if you're not using your, your, your graphic card to render. Or you could be doing other tasks without your system starts to become slow or sluggish. However, your rendering time is going to take a little bit longer because you don't have access to all of the cores. But instead of then just sitting and waiting for your system to render, you now can do other stuff. Unless it's a really good optimized program like um, Premiere Pro. Premiere Pro is so optimized that there's a lot of people that are playing games while Premiere Pro is rendering in the background because it's so good at... It's so well coded and works so well with Windows that it can do that, and, and also Mac OS, that it can handle multitasking while spending. If you're using DaVinci Resolve, the free version that barely use any TPU acceleration, 
that you have to pay for that in the paid version, by the way. If you render all your processes going up to 100% and utilizing every fucking thing, in the program, you can limit it to like, say, use 70% or 80% of all my resources. And it will do that and you can do a little bit of things, but you're still relying on Windows and the code of the Windows result figuring out multitask. When I say get finished, I when, my, when I'm rendering videos on a 12 core system, I can still watch YouTube, I can still go and, and, and do, do, you know, browsing tasks. But if you want to game, for example, you can say Windows set prior process affinity to my to help for my system use only. Like physical, like not physical, but core uses only. Because in the Vince Resolve, it only say how many percentage of the whole system resources it's going to use. This is Windows Professional. I don't know if you can do this on Windows Home Edition. I have not tried it out. I only have Professional. But I will say this, most modern system, and if you're running anything from Windows from 2010 and up, if you're running Linux from 2010 and up, you probably don't even need to do this. But if you are someone that is like, I have built this program that's highly single threaded and I need to run it on the most efficient core I have or most powerful core. Again, if you're talking Intel, you can park these one of these on an on a E core, like an efficiency core. If it's something that's running all the time, so you're not, you know, it's not being forced into a, into a um, performance core and eating up a lot of fucking uh, power with without you know unnecessarily and stuff like that so there's a lot of reasons to do this you just have to remember that you did it and you also have to remember that you can potentially fuck your system up by doing this what i mean by this is if you start to take if you start to become the multi-core handler of your operating system if something goes wrong you were the one to blame if you if you want to be the one allocating all the fucking cpu cores for all your programs you can't do that as efficiently as windows and linux and mac os what you can do is that if you have a suspicion that a program is coded in a way that it's parking itself in in the wrong places on cpus or you have made a program that you have made that just this core number five is just the best fucking single core performer out of the bunch it's like giving the middle finger to all of them all of them are fat kids compared to core number five and i need all the fucking oomph i can get to get this program one or do as much as possible then you can say you know what windows or linux and or whatever other operating system you're using i me i want you to only run this program on core number five which is core number six, by the way. See you all later. Bye-bye.